If two black holes collide a billion light years away, do they make a sound? Yes, an international team of scientists announced that yesterday, confirming the final prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity. It is a very big deal. And joining us now for why is Latham Boyle, a theoretical physicist and faculty member at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Waterloo, Ontario, of course. Welcome, hello. hello. You know, in the last 24 hours, there has been no adjective too big to describe what was announced yesterday. So Zuckerberg, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg calls this, you know, one of the biggest discoveries of modern science. Cosmologist Lawrence Krauss called this discovery as important as the invention of the telescope. Latham Boyle, what are you calling this thing? How big is it? Uh, you know, I, I, I agree. It's a really, it's a very historic discovery uh, uh, in, in physics. It, it's, it really is like um, a new uh, sort of astronomy was born yesterday. And uh, 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 it, so, ever for the past 400 years since Galileo first pointed a telescope up at the sky, um, the, tele the sorts of telescopes we've used have received have all received electromagnetic waves. So, like light, like sort of waves your eye sees, or radio waves, or microwaves. Um, but uh, this this what they detected yesterday was a new kind of wave, gravitational waves, which are really sort of ripples in the fabric of space-time itself. It's, it's like uh, uh, Einstein's theory of gravity, our modern theory of gravity, which he discovered 100 years ago, um, describes space-time as a sort of stretchy fabric. And, uh, that, and, and, and he predicted 100 years ago that it could have waves that rippled through it. Um, and that's really what has been detected. And it's. Uh, and what's the difference? Because we've always, you know, we've only heard one kind of wave. I'm trying to just break this down for, for people like me who don't understand this stuff at all. Um, one kind of wave all the time. And now, we've, what's, and now we have a gravitational wave. Like, what is the significance of, of that? Is it just that we've never discovered this before? Or is it larger than that? Um, it, is, it is larger than that. So, uh, you know, I would say there's sort of two, there's sort of two things. There's, a, there's something about the past, and then there's something about the future. About the past. The issue is that um, Einstein's theory of gravity, uh, we had good evidence already that it was, that it was uh, a correct theory, that at least th that, that it did a better job than any other theory we have of describing gravity in our solar system and certain other astrophysical systems. Um, but, but then some of its most interesting wild predictions, like things like black holes, um, really, we did not have very direct evidence for, and uh, so suddenly, uh, uh, we, we really have, we have now suddenly seen black holes much more directly than we ever had before. And uh, also, his prediction of gravitational waves, we had never directly seen those before. Uh, suddenly, now we, we have. We've so detected. in essence, we have proof. There was a theory. Right. We had now have proof that right. the theory is correct. But then, but I was just going to say that going forward, for me, the most exciting thing is going forward, it's really... Um, opened a new kind of astronomy. So, you know, historically, when we've t invented a whole new type of way of looking out into the universe, uh, we discover new stuff that we never, never expected. So we always sort of think that we know what's out there, and uh, and uh, but then when we invent a really new kind of telescope, we discover we were totally wrong. And so at the moment, we're we're looking. We've only been looking at the things in the universe that are light, that shine. But we know there's tons of stuff out there that's dark. And so at the very least, suddenly we're going to be able to look at that stuff. Um, are these but, the black holes that that, that I hear? Yes. Okay. The, 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 an, an example of a dark thing is is exactly the, the sort of black hole system that they that they announced that they detected yesterday. Uh, two black holes. In spiraling until they merge. Okay, into we're going to put up a video. We hole. have a simulation of two black holes uh, merging. If things like that are the only sorts of dark things out in out in the universe uh, that will now suddenly be accessible to us, that will all, already be tremendously interesting. Um, but you know, it's important to remember that there that the universe continually surprises us, and I imagine that there will be other unexpected things out there in the dark that we haven't seen because we haven't had the sort of Eyes to eyes to, to see them until now, um, you know. The, the the my favorite example is is the invention of radio astronomy. Already back in 1900, Tesla and others were manipulating radio waves. They could have built a radio telescope to look at the sky back then, but they didn't because astronomers thought they knew what was out there in the universe. They thought that what was out there were stars like our sun, which 
were very weak emitters of radio waves. So if they built a telescope, they would just look up, and they wouldn't see anything. Um, so why bother? And so they waited until after the Second World War to build the first radio telescopes and, and, uh, and, and point them at the sky. But then suddenly they discovered all this crazy stuff. They discovered the, something called the cosmic microwave background, which is sort of a cosmic selfie that the universe took of itself when it was 300,000 years old, uh, which was very young, much less than very young compared to how old it is today. They discovered things called pulsars, which are like little incredibly dense atomic nuclei, but as massive as, as a whole sun. And they're spinning around, like uh, whipping a beam of radiation out like a lighthouse. They discovered things called quasars, which are bl supermassive black holes, a billion times more massive than our sun. Things where you just people would have said you were crazy if you had suggested they were out there uh, prior to the radio telescope. But then suddenly you turned it on, and boom, there was all this stuff that nobody, nobody imagined. And so the most exciting thing for me about this discovery is that by LIGO is, is, is that um, we know things like that have happened in the past, and there's a real hope that, that going forward that um, they'll discover all sorts of the potential, unexpected the stuff. Potential yeah, the potential that potential this might for, yeah. You said this acronym LIGO. We're going to put a picture up. This is LIGO. This mm -hmm. is uh, the, the observatory in Louisiana, Livingston uh, uh, Observatory in Louisiana. LIGO stands for the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. It is the observatory which detected uh, this gravitational wave. Um, explain this picture to me. So what's, it, what's happening at this observatory? So uh, LIGO is actually two, two antennas, uh, both of which look like the one you're showing there. One of them is in, is in the state of Washington in the, in the uh, northwest United States, and the other one is down in Louisiana at the very south. Um, both of these antennas, you can think of them, it's like, a giant, it's like one of these giant rabbit ear antennas that you, you have on, uh, on, your, uh, on an old television set. Um, but here, both of the arms of the antenna are uh, four kilometers long. So it's a gi gi gigantically large. And each of those arms, it's not a metal rod. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tube of very high vacuum. So it's one of the best vacuums uh, uh, available on Earth. Uh, so, so you have a four kilometer tube and a four kilometer tube with um, virtually nothing in it. And then down each tube, uh, you, you, you send in a laser beam and you split it and it, it runs down both tubes, hits a mirror at the other end and bounces back. And then when it bounces back, you interfere the two radio waves. And the idea is that when a gravitational wave, a ripple in space time comes passing down through the system, it causes the lengths of those arms to oscillate ever so slightly. And uh, the name of the game is to try to detect that that's happening. That's how you detect a gravitational wave is happening. And so what they, so this laser interferometer, incredibly tiny shifts in the, in the distances of the mirrors um, can be detected by them. I, they, they, they had in their press conference yesterday, they had a great way of explaining this. They said that the, the change that they're looking for is like, you know, so, so the distance from the Earth to the sun is eight light minutes. It takes light eight minutes to travel from the sun to the Earth. From the Earth to the next furthest star is several light years. It takes light several years to get there. Um, uh, the, what they detected yesterday was, uh, was like detecting the change in distance between the Earth and the next furthest star, uh, detecting a change equal to the width of a human hair. Wow. So it's really an it's a, a, a unbelievable human achievement, really, to, to, have, to have built over many decades, this this detector that is just so detects changes that are really so Minuscule. much more, so much tinier, so much more precise than anything anything we've ever built before. They released yesterday. LIGO did the, the, the sound, so I want to play that. It's sound. Here we go. Listen for it. Go, Latham. I mean, you just you know you just talked about how what a precise discovery this was. That's the sound of it. What yeah. is? <laughs> I'm not trying to diminish it, but it sounds like a grumbling tummy, really. Right. So, well, what you're hearing there is uh, it's all happening very fast. But what 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 happens is that when two black holes spiral together, as they get closer, they begin to spiral faster and faster and faster until finally they're spiraling around each other at, 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 the, at the speed of light and, uh, and right before they merge into a final black hole. And so as they get closer and spin faster, um, 
as they're spinning, they're, they're, they're shaking the fabric of space-time around them. And then those, those waves that are being created are traveling out. They're traveling over a billion light years to reach the Earth. This, yeah, this, they're this like 1.3 billion light years that's away. That's right. This particular event was very far away, 1.3 billion light years. So that's, that's, maybe, that's roughly a tenth of the distance across the whole visible universe. So very, very far away. Um, uh, and uh, so as they get closer and closer together, they're spiraling faster and faster. So they're sh sort of shaking the fabric faster and faster. And so the frequency is getting higher and higher. And so it's like as if you, it's, so it, it makes this so-called chirp signal. It's like a, like a cricket's chirp, which goes up in frequency. So it's like if you take your finger and run it along the piano keys from low to high, uh, that you hear a little bit of this whoop. Um, uh, yes. So. So indeed, it, it, a, a remarkable thing is that it's at this frequency range where your ear can hear it. But mm. if you really want to get the information out from the signal, you know, your ear does not get very much about it. I you have to really dig in and. Uh, sure, and I was was being trite to say, yeah. you know, um, but it is. I know scientists don't like this word, but let me ask this as a layperson: Did we just get lucky in hearing this thing? Uh, in, in the sense that the uh, universe, we're very, we appear to have gotten lucky in the universe that we live in, that there appears to be a lot of these sources out there. So that was one of the biggest um, uncertainties before the LIGO discovery was, um, uh, would there be, we, we were very confident that Einstein's theory of gravity was correct. I think we were very confident already before yesterday that gravitational waves existed. In fact, there had been an earlier Nobel Prize given for demonstrating the existence of gravitational waves, even though we hadn't detected them yet. The fact that just after turning on their detector, so immediately after turning, turning on their detector, they detected such a whopping signal, um, really means that the universe is uh, full of quite a, lot of quite a large number of such events. So we'll, the, we'll be having a field day with these events. They'll be detecting many more uh, gravitational wave events like this one. Um, and that was one of the biggest uncertainties going into the experiment. Would there be um, sources out there that were strong enough um, for LIGO to detect them, LIGO and detectors like LIGO to detect them? Okay, so now we're going to have lots more of these. We're going to have lots okay. more of them, exactly. Um, you talked about you know, what, this, uh, what this discovery means for the future, what, what we're hoping to unlock after this discovery. Could this discovery also help us understand the origins of the universe? Um, Detecting gravitational waves could, could help us to uh, uh, understand the origins of the universe. Um, certainly our understanding of the early universe is very much based on Einstein's theory of gravity, Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, which received a further experimental confirmation yesterday. Um, but also uh, a lot of theories of the early universe predict that um, some theories of the early, early universe predict that the early universe, the, the, uh, the very rapid expansion of the er universe at early times could cause the universe to sort of ring like a bell in, in gravitational waves. Um, and those gravitational waves could linger until today and, 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 and potentially be detectable today. Um, we don't know whether, they will be, whether the gravitational waves produced early on are strong enough to be detected today or not, um, but uh, that's a possibility. And uh, if they are, then that will that'll teach us a huge amount about the early. Universe. This is a scientific breakthrough, but it, it's a technological one as well. Yes, that's that, true. what happened at LIGO. So, are there other ways that um, this technology that um, that uh, discover these waves? Are there other applications for it? Um, you know, at the moment, uh, for for the for the time being. Uh, uh, I think of gravitational waves as being something where you detect them astronomically, but it, they're not the sort of things where you send signals with them. They're, they're so, gravity is so weak that at the moment it seems technologically unfeasible to do that. But it should also be mentioned that you know, 100 years ago, Einstein realized that his theory had these waves in them, but he, analyzed, you know, he thought about it and decided that it was going to be impossible to ever even detect them, and here we are. 100 years later, um, detecting them. So, you know, technology marches ahead and uh, in ways that seem hard to imagine at, at the time, you know, or, or, or as, as things move forward over decades and, or over a century. And so, uh, you know, I, I would never say never about, about, <laughs> about, about, about using gravitational waves for, 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 for technological reasons. I mean, one, one notable thing about them is that they pass through everything, you know, so you can, 
you know, a gravitation wave passes right through the Earth without, without being attenuated at all, unlike a radio wave or something where you can't send it directly through the Earth. Um, so in principle, there are reasons that you, could, you might think of using them for, for technological applications. It's just that at the moment, they're so weak, they're so hard to detect that it took 40 years of effort to detect this. Uh, you know, it took 40 years of, of sort of, uh, of uh, amazing technological progress to get to this point where we could even detect them. So at the moment, it seems futuristic to think about using them for sending signals. Mm. But, but, uh, but really, really who knows? I should also mention that, that, uh, that uh, the, other, the other thing to mention about technological spinoff is just in developing, in the process of developing this LIGO detector, the, um, uh, uh, that, that required, that, that detector that's really a more sensitive uh, instrument than we've ever built before by many orders of magnitude, that involved inventing a lot of new technologies, more accurate sensors, more accurate ways of shielding noise, um, that certainly have, have, have other technological applications uh, outside, of, outside of gravitational waves. Big day yesterday. We'll see what comes of it all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.